Good evening, friends, and welcome to yet another awesome session of Mindful Living. My name is Ashish Kumar, and I'm the founder of Mindful Living. Today, what we are going to do is uh, share some stories uh, that have inspired me. And I would uh, also like to hear from you about some stories that have inspired you uh, so that we can all benefit from each other. As I was mentioning earlier, I would really appreciate if you can keep your cameras on so that we can have a nice interaction. Uh, these are uh, uh, short stories. Uh, so each one of them is hardly five minutes. Uh, so please don't be distracted. Uh, sometimes we join these Zoom sessions while we are doing something else. So if you're doing something else, I will urge you not to do so for next 30 minutes or so and give complete attention. Otherwise, you just might miss the most important part of the story. And as I mentioned earlier, these are only about five minutes or so. Uh, I'll share the story and then I would like to hear your thoughts on what your takeaways are from this story. And uh, we will also like to uh, uh, open up if there is any story you would like to share. So thank you and welcome once again. The first story, okay, so I have, uh, let me ask you something. There are three stories which I have got for today. The one is about a crow who used to compare himself with everybody else. And I picked up this one because uh, this is something which I uh, hear a lot from people. And, uh, you know, that we compare a lot, uh, ourselves a lot with others, our children a lot with other children, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's the story, the crow who compared. The second story is Hot Halwa and the Golden Temple. And the third story is Give Me No in brackets more. So which one would you like to hear first? The crow who compared, the Hot Halwa, or give me no more. You can type in the chat or you can unmute and speak. Which one would you like to hear first? The crow who compared, thank you, Shivank. Give me no more. Give me no more, okay. Okay, thank you, Suresh sir. Anybody else? Crow. Okay, so we have two votes for Crow. So Surya sir, we will keep, uh, give me no more for the last and let's get started with the Crow who compared. And this is a simple and very interesting story. Um, the message may not be so much in the story, but in the reflection that we will do. And uh, so I'll get started. Once upon a time in a lush and vibrant forest, there lived a Crow named Kalia. He was a sleek bird with shiny black feathers, but he often felt sad comparing himself with other birds who were more colorful and admired in the forest. His heart ached with the desire to be more beautiful, to be admired like others. One sunny afternoon, he decided to speak with Cygnus the swan. Kalia flew to the tranquil pond where the elegant swan Cygnus resided. As he perched on a branch near the water, he gazed at Cygnus with admiration. Cygnus, he began. Your feathers are so white and pristine. Everyone admires you. I wish I could be as fair as you. Cygnus glided gracefully across the pond, her feathers shimmering in the sunlight. She looked at Kalia with kind eyes and said, my dear Kalia, while my feathers are white, this is the only color I have. I have often envied the vibrant colors of others. 
Have you seen Parry the parrot? His feathers are a brilliant mix of green, red, and blue. Perhaps you should meet him. Kalia flew to the tall tree where the Parry the parrot lived. He found Perry perched on a branch, preening his multicolored feathers. Perry Kalia called. Your feathers are so bright and colorful. Everyone thinks you are the most beautiful bird in the forest. I wish I had your colors. Perry looked at Kalia with his bright, intelligent eyes and chuckled softly. Oh, Kalia, I only have feathers of three colors. I have always envied the majestic peacock, Percy. His tail feathers are like a magnificent fan, shimmering with iridescent blues and greens. You should see him. He is truly the most beautiful. <clears throat> With a heart full of hope, Kalia flew to the meadow where Percy the peacock strutted about. Percy was surrounded by a crowd of animals, all admiring his splendid tail feathers. Kalia approached him timidly. Percy, Kalia said, your feathers are magnificent. Everyone is enchanted by your beauty. I wish I could be as beautiful as you. Percy spread his tail feathers wide, creating a dazzling display. He sighed deeply and said, Ah, Kalia, my feathers look splendid, but beauty comes with its own burden. Every day, I have to maintain this grand appearance and it is not easy. Besides, while my feathers are admired, my feet are considered quite unattractive. Mm -hmm. Look at them. They are so scaly and awkward. Kalia looked at his feet and then back at his own glossy black feathers. He realized that every bird he admired had their own worries and insecurities. Beauty, he understood, was not just about the color or appearance, but how one felt about themselves. There are a couple of lines more, but I'd like to pause here to see your reflection on the story. The crow is comparing himself uh, with other birds about beauty, but have you found yourself comparing your car with the cars of others? Or your house with the house of others or your designation or whatever the bug money or whatever else. And if it is okay with you, please share your takeaway from this story, if there is one, before I share Kalia's takeaways. You may type in the chat or you can unmute yourself and speak. This story is a very simple one, but I found it to be very profound. And this is what I always remind myself of. Whenever I find myself comparing me or my family members with others. Let me continue with the story. Yeah, thank you, Surya, sir. Very beautiful. 
each one of us have our own strengths and there is absolutely no point uh, comparing ourselves with others. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Shivang. And this story is a very powerful reminder that we are all beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Anjana. Very beautiful. We all have qualities which are worthy of admiration. And uh, we have to be the first ones to admire ourselves before others can admire us. And that's a perfect segue for me to complete the story of Kalia. Feeling a newfound sense of contentment, Kalia thanked Percy and flew back to his favorite tree. He perched on a branch, the sun casting a warm glow on his black feathers. For the first time, he felt truly beautiful, not because how he looked, but because he had accepted himself for who he was. Reflecting on his journey, Kalia understood a profound life lesson. The true beauty comes from within. It is not defined by external appearance, but by the acceptance and confidence one has in one's own self. Each bird he had spoken to had something unique and admirable, but they also had their own insecurities. By embracing their own unique qualities, Kalia discovered that he could find joy and contentment. From that day onward, Kalia no longer envied other birds. He appreciated his own unique beauty and found happiness in being himself. He sang with a heart full of joy, his black feathers glistening in the sunlight, a symbol of his newfound self-acceptance. And in doing so, he discovered that the true beauty shone brightest when one embraced their own uniqueness and let their inner light shine regardless of color. Thank you, friends. Yeah, Ravi sir, thank you so much for sharing that. And it is stories like this, which are a reminder for us to celebrate our uniqueness. It is by reminding ourselves, by constantly reminding ourselves, we can start making a difference. Each one of us that has a crow, has a parrot, has a swan, has a peacock inside us. Let's, let us identify what is unique in us and celebrate that. Let us recognize what is unique in others and appreciate that. We get a lot distracted by what's not right in others, but let's look at what's right in them rather than looking at what's not right. I'll pause for a couple of seconds to let the message of the story sink in. You may close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. Let the message resonate with you. And then we'll begin with our next story, which is the hot halwa and the golden temple. Some of our friends have joined recently, so I'll request them to keep their cameras on in case they have. What we are doing is reading a couple of short stories. We've already finished with our first one. There are two more that we will go with. These stories are no longer than five minutes. Uh, so please listen to them with attention. Uh, they might finish before 
his start and so keep attention and we will request your thoughts on it uh, once we complete the story or even midway so this is hot halwa and the golden temple ravi had always wanted to visit the golden temple in amritsar the shimmering golden structure surrounded by the sacred amrit sarovar water was said to radiate a sense of peace and spiritual fulfillment one early morning he took a shatabdi from delhi and reached amritsar he finally found himself standing in front of the temple his heart brimming with reverence after paying his respects inside the temple ravi joined the line for the prasad the sacred offering given to devotees today they were serving halwa made from pure ghee and sugar the rich scent of the halwa wafted through the air mingling with the smell of incense and flowers creating an atmosphere of divine serenity ravi reached the front of the line and a kindly sevadar scooped a generous portion of piping hot halwa into his cupped hands Ravi smiled in gratitude and whispered a soft satnam vai guru before stepping aside Almost immediately he felt the intense heat of the halwa sear into his palms He instinctively jerked his hands apart letting the halwa shift from one hand to the other Ravi glanced around. There were many people who were eating their prasad with serene expression, not wanting to appear disrespectful or wasteful. He couldn't drop it, nor could he throw it away. He had no choice but to keep shifting the halwa from one hand. to the other each pass bringing a fresh wave of heat as he continued this delicate dance ravi's initial discomfort began to give way to reflection his mind wandered to the challenges he faced in his own life recently he had been struggling with a problem at work that seemed unsurmountable every attempt to solve the problem only brought more frustration i will now pause here and like you to like to invite you to reflect on any situation you or anyone you know might have had in their life which is like a hot halwa you know you have piping hot halwa in your hand you can't eat it you can't throw it away so what do you do you just keep shifting from one hand to the other till it cools has there been a situation like that in your life where there was not much that you could do other than just be with it toss it around till the solution kind of magically appears so take a couple of seconds to reflect on the same and share either in the chat or unmute yourself and speak
In the meantime, I'll continue with the story. Every attempt to solve the problem only brought more frustration. Much like the hot halwa, his work issues were something he couldn't simply discard or ignore. He had to manage them until he found a solution. As the halwa gradually cooled, Ravi realized he was learning a profound lesson. The situation with the halwa was much like the life's challenges. Sometimes we are handed circumstances that seem unbearable at first, but we have to endure the discomfort while seeking a way to handle them. Eventually, the halwa cooled enough for Ravi to eat. As he took his first bite, the sweet, warm taste filled him with a sense of relief and satisfaction. He smiled, feeling a sense of accomplishment, just not just for managing to eat the halwa, but for the insights he had gained. Finishing the prasad, Ravi made his way to the edge of the Amrit Sarovar and sat down. The morning sun reflected off the golden domes, creating a shimmering path on the water. He watched the devotees move around, each with their own burdens, their own halwa to manage. Ravi now understood that life's difficulties are like the hot halwa. They are temporary. By patiently managing them and shifting our perspective, we can eventually find relief and even gain wisdom from the experience. As he sat by the water, feeling a profound sense of Feeling a profound sense of peace, he made a silent vow to apply his newfound understanding to his life. He left the golden temple that day with more than just memories of a beautiful place. He carried with him a valuable lesson. The prasad had nourished more than his body. It had fed his spirit to the lesson in patience, resilience, and the importance of managing life's challenges with grace and perseverance. Thank you. So please take a couple of seconds. Hello, Prasun sir. Namaste. Please take a couple of seconds to reflect on the story. You would have figured that Prasad represents the challenges that we have in our life and how do we handle them. We tend to push them away, but there are times when we can't push them away. We just need to accept the challenge as it is and manage with it and find the wisdom that comes to us from managing the challenge. So I'll pause here uh, for you to share, and uh, then we will move for the, towards the last story for the day. Namaste, Namaste, Prasunji. बड़ी अच्छी कहानी थी तो मुझे मैं बोल सकता हूँ कुछ? हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल बोलिए ये ओपन माइक सेशन है प्रसन्नजी. धन्यवाद. तो मुझे ना भगवत गीता से एक श्लोक याद आ गया. अब अगर आपकी इजाजत हो तो मैं यहाँ पे साझा करना चाहूंगा अब कौन है इजाजत देने वाले जी? तो दूसरे अध्याय का चौदवा श्लोक है फोर्टीन श्लोक फ्रॉम द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवत गीता विच गोज लाइक दिस मात्रा स्पर्शास्तु कौन थे 
ಶೀತೋಷ್ಣ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖದ ಆಗಮ ಪಾಯಿನೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸಾಂಸ್ಕೃತಿಕ್ಷಸ್ವ ಭಾರತ ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಕೋ ಬೋಲ್ತೆ ಹೈ ಕಿ ಜಬ್ ಬಿ ಹಮಾರಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಕಿಸಿ ಬಿ ವಸ್ತು ವಿಷಯ ಅವ್ರ ವಸ್ತು ಕೆ ಸಂಪರ್ಕ ಮೇ ಆಯಿ ತೋ ಹಮ ಚಾರ್ ತರೀ ಕೆ ಅನುಭೂತಿ ಹೋಗಿ ಶೀತ ಉಷ್ಣ ಠಂಡಾ ಯಾ ಗರಮ ದುಃಖ ಯಾ ಸುಖ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರವೈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯೇ ಜೋ ಹೈ ಚೀಜೆ ಹಮಾರಿ ಜಿಂದಗಿ ಮೇ ಆನೆ ಹಿ ವಾಲಿ ಹೈ ಕ್ಯೂಕಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ತೋ ಮೈನೆ ತುಮಕೋ ದೇ ಹಿ ದಿ ಪಾಂಚ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಕೈ ನಾ ಕೈ ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ಆಯಿ ವಿಷಯ ಯಾ ವಸ್ತು ಕೆ ಆರ್ ಯೇ ಸಾರಿ ಆಪಕೋ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆನೆ ಹಿ ವಾಲಿ ಹೈ ಮಗರ್ ಏಕ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ಲೇಮರ್ ವೋ ದೇ ಆಗಮ ಪಾಯಿನೋ ಅನಿತ್ಯ ಆಗಮ ಪಾಯಿನ್ಯ ಅನಿತ್ಯ ಬೋಲ್ತೆ ಹೈ ಕಿ ಲೇಕಿನ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಯೇ ಸಾರೇ ಕೆ ಸಾರೇ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋ ಅನಿತ್ಯ ಹೈ ಯೇ ಯೇ ಕೋಯಿ ಬಿ ರುಕೇಗಾ ನೈ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋ ಸಾಮ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಕ್ ಶಸ್ವ ಭಾರತ ಭಾರತ ಇಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಬೋಲ್ತೆ ತೂ ಇಸ್ ಕೋ ಸಹನ್ ಕರ್ನಾ ಸೀಖ ಅಬ್ ಯೇ ಜೋ ಹಾಟ್ ಹಲ್ವಾ ಥಾ ಜೋ ಗರಮ ಜೋ ಹಲ್ವಾ ಥಾ ಯೇ ಬಿಲ್ಕುಲ್ ವೈಸಾ ಹಿ ಹೈ ಜೈಸಿ ಸಿಚುಯೇಶನ್ ಹಮಾರಿ ಜಿಂದಗಿ ಮೇ ಆತಿ ಹೈ ಹಮ ಚಾಹೆ ನಾ ಚಾಹೆ ವೋ ಗರಮ ಹೋಗಾ ಯಾ ಅಗರ ವೋ ಹೈ ಅಗರ ಬರಫ ಹೋತಾ ತೋ ಬಿ ಹಮ ಐಸೆ ಐಸೆ ಕರ್ ರಹೇ ಹೋತೆ ಹೈ ನಾ ಅಗರ ಬರಫ ಕಾ ಟುಕಡಾ ಬಿ ಹೋತಾ ತೋ ಲೇಕಿನ್ ಕ್ಯೂಕಿ ವೋ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಹೈ ಇಸಿಲಿಯೆ ರವಿ ನೇ ಉಸ್ಕೋ ಫೇಕಾ ನಹಿ ಕ್ಯೂಕಿ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಹೈ ಪರ್ ಉಸ್ನೆ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ ಕಿಯಾ ಜಬ್ ತಕ್ ವೋ ಕೂಲ್ ನೈ ಹೋ ಗಯಾ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೋ ಜಿಂದಗಿ ಮೇ ಐಸಿ ಜಬ್ ಬಿ ಕೋಯಿ ಸಿಚುಯೇಶನ್ ಆಯಿಗಿ ಉಸ್ಕೋ ಅಗರ ಮೇ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕಾ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಮಾನ ಕೇ ಗ್ರಹಣ ಕರೂ ತೋ ವೋ ಸಹನ್ ಕರನೇ ಕೀ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಬಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದೇ ಹಿ ದೇಂಗೆ ಅಬ್ಸೋಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಸೋ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಪ್ರಸೂನ್ ಜಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಸೋನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ರಿಷಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ಸ್ ಲೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು Uh, anybody else would like to share anything about the story of hot halwa and then we will move on to our last one all right uh, you can even if you get some insights later you can share them in our whatsapp group or uh, in the chat here and now we move to the last story of the day which is give me no is in bracket give me no more and uh, this is about mulla nasruddin so please enjoy the story it will take about 5 to 6 minutes and then we will have a discussion on this <laughs> mulla nasruddin was a beloved figure in his village he was known for his humor wisdom and deep connection with the god one bright morning as he sat in his favorite spot under the ancient oak tree at the village center a wealthy man came running towards him the man dressed in fine silks and adorned with jewels was panting heavily he collapsed at mulla nasruddin's feet his face flushed with desperation mulla he gasped i need your help he pleaded you must convey a message to god for me tell him i want no more my riches are overwhelming the gold the land the servants it's all too much i have more gold land and possessions than i can handle i am drowning in abundance and i fear i will lose my peace of mind entirely please mulla tell god to stop giving me more please convey this to god Mulla Nasruddin looked at the rich man and nodded. He nodded 
but before he could respond, a raggedly dressed man approached them. The poorly dressed beggar with sunken eyes and thin limbs hesitated before speaking. His voice, a mere whisper compared to the rich man's desperate plea. Mullah Nasruddin, he said softly, I have nothing. No home, no food, no clothes, except this rag. Please ask God to give me more. I need enough to survive, to live with dignity. I am not asking for much, just enough to lift me up from this destitution. Mullah Nasruddin stood up and signaled for both the men to follow him. He led them to the edge of the village where the field stretched out towards the horizon. There he told them to wait while he meditated and communicated with the divine. The two men watched as Mullah Nasruddin closed his eyes and entered a deep state of contemplation. After some time, Mullah Nasruddin opened his eyes and raised his hands signaling for silence. Both men felt quiet, their eyes fixed on the Mullah, hoping for an answer. To you, the rich man, Mullah Nasruddin began. God says, stop being grateful. The rich man said, that's not possible. And he respectfully walked away. And you beggar, your plight indeed is unfortunate. Appreciate even the smallest blessings and more will come your way. The beggar looked confused. Mullah, I have nothing. What is there to be grateful for? Should I be grateful for this rag? Pointing to the rag that he was wearing. Suddenly a strong wind blew and took away even the rag that the beggar was wearing. Mullah Nasruddin smiled gently. Gratitude is not about the quantity of what you have, but the quality of your heart. Even the smallest things, a meal, a kind word, a moment of peace can be source of immense gratitude. When you begin to appreciate these, you will attract more positivity and opportunity in your life. Be grateful for what we have. Just allow me a minute. There is an urgent call that is coming. You may open up the session to yourself for discussion and discuss amongst yourselves. I'll just be back with you in a couple of minutes. Yes, friends, you can say one something.
So the story is about Prophet Moses. It why do we fabricate it? I guess with the name of Mullah Nasruddin. It's mentioned in Quran and Torah. So this is the story of Prophet Moses. Okay. Uh, substance is same thing. I mean, we can call it, but substance is that gratitude. Correct. Story is same. Yeah. And how about the uh, gentleman who said about the Gita? Sir, please. Yes, yes. Thank you, Surya, sir, for stepping in. Thank you. Prasunji, you would like to share something? Prasun Kundu, sir. Mereko, sir, sorry. I Bhagavad Gita. I Bhagavad Gita. I but... It's me, sir. So, it's me. 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 तो हम जिंदगी में जो भी करते हैं वो सुख के लिए करते हैं अब ये जो कहानी थी जिसके पास बहुत ज्यादा है वो भी सुखी नहीं है और जिसके पास कुछ भी नहीं है वो भी सुखी नहीं है <laughs> तो तो वो भगवान कह रहे हैं कि सुखं त्विदानीन त्रिविधम सुख भी तीन तरह का होता है अर्जुन तिमुर्ते सुन वो बाद में बताएंगे मैं उसमें नहीं जाऊंगा श्रुणु में भरत अर्ष भरत है ना भरत वर्षीय वंशियों में श्रेष्ठ तू मेरे से सुन Abhyasadrumate yatra, over a period of time when we practice something, what is happiness? Dukhan tancha nigachati, jahape hamara dukho ka ant hota hai, that is happiness. The end of sorrow is happiness. Okay, now, if you have something in abundance, either you don't value it, and agar aap kya kuch nahi hai, to bhi aap pareshan hai. So, whatever you have, you should actually be treasuring it. Now, like he says, I have a rag. What do I do? How can I be happy? Now, there is a wind in that. It has also been out of it. So, this is the life, right? This is the life, right? Absolutely. And, someone hasn't said that you don't want to ask. But no more. He says, "Mujhe nahi chahiye." He says, "Bolta hai, mujhe chahiye." So these are the two uh, ends of a spectrum. A thoda sa, itna zada shayad zindagi mein hota nahi hai, magar yes, jo bhi mere paas hai, kya main usme santusht ho sakta hu kya? Because only that is in my control. Correct. Jo mere paas nahi hai, uske liye main mehnat kar sakta hu. Okay. So, Manakalik uh, Swami Sarva Priyananda, he is the head of uh, Ram Krishna Mission, Vedanta Society, bolte, New York. He is very good. So, Mihai Chikzen Mihai, a uh, flow of concentration, bolke ek kitab hai. Usme se he was uh, quoting uh, some things. And he said that in uh, our life, there are so many distractions. Hai. Ki, to concentrate on one thing is so very difficult. And more often than not, we concentrate on things that we don't have. And the things that we don't have are usually not in our control. So instead, if we focus and concentrate on things that we have, and unhone ek bahut chhi baat boli, flow of concentration, bada achha kitab hai, agar aap padhega, unhone usse samiksha ki hai. There is a 20 minute ka video. I will group it in the group. Sure, sure, sure. Presently. Look, they hear that. The human brain can process only 130 bit of information at a time. Mihai chicks and mihai. That's a word. So, this is why we are talking about it. And if we are talking about it, we are talking about it. Because we are talking about it. Because we are talking about it. And if we are talking about it, जो हम बहुत ज्यादा यूज करते हैं वो कर लेते हैं 90 तक अगर हम यूज करेंगे देन वी आर वेरी फोकस्ड एंड कंसंट्रेटेड बट आज के डेट में 
उन्होंने वो जो रिसर्च किया था दैट इज ओनली टेन बिट्स दैट वी यूज एट अ टाइम वेन वी आर वर्किंग ओके एंड दैट इज हाउ ही वॉज ट्राइंग टू टेल अस दैट वेन यू फोकस ऑन समथिंग लोग बोलते अरे एक ही चीज करते 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 तो बोरिंग हो जाएगा बोलते ऐसा नहीं है जब आप एक ही चीज करते 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 इट बिकम्स एंजॉयबल इट बिकम्स एंजॉयबल एंड ही गिव एन ब्यूटिफुल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ही वॉज ए आई आई टी कानपुर स्टूडेंट तो बोलते आई आई टी कानपुर में जब मैं लाइब्रेरी में जाके बैठता था तो मैं उस लाइब्रेरी में जाके देखता था कि दस बारह लोग हैं जो आके पूरा दिन लाइब्रेरी में बैठ के एक किताब में घुसे हुए हैं लगे हुए हैं उसमें कुछ ना कुछ शोध कर रहे हैं ऐसे ही फिर उनको बोलते हैं कहीं पे मुझे की नोट स्पीकर का मिला तो मैं आई वेंट टू मुंबई का कोई एक इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज प्राइवेटली हेल्ड इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज था बट बहुत संपन्न इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज तो बोले वहां पे मैं गया तो अपने टॉक से पहले मैं कंप्यूटर लैब के सामने से घुसा तो मैं गुजरा तो मैंने देखा लैब खाली पड़ा हुआ तो मैंने उनसे पूछा लैब खाली क्यों है बोले हमारे पास सुविधा है सब यूज तो ही नहीं करता <laughs> तो उन्होंने बोला मैंने अपने टॉक ही ऐसे स्टार्ट किया कि एक आई और एक यहाँ के कॉलेज के बंदे में फर्क क्या है बिकॉज इंटेलिजेंस का कोई कमी है नहीं द ओनली डिफरेंस इज द फोकस एंड द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दैट वी ब्रिंग इन टू जॉब अब एक मेरे पास फैसिलिटी है बट आई डोंट यूज इट बिकॉज आई डोंट नो वॉट टू डू विद फैसिलिटी सो दैट इज ऑल्सो नॉट ए गुड थिंग टू है सो अब इसके पास लाइफ है जो रैग पहन के आए बट ही डजेंट नो वॉट टू डू विद दैट लाइफ so that is the difference in that banda uh, halaki dono hi are not very happy and dono hi thoda sa pain tha but that's my thought thank you thank you for sharing such beautiful perspective prashant ji surya sir you would like to share something thank you kundu sir thank you thank you this shlok number 6.5 of bhagavad gita jo kisi ne likha hai so that shlok goes like this उद्धरेदात्मन आत्मन आत्मा नवसाद आत्म वैश्यात्म बंधु आत्म इट इज ओनली यू हू विल डिसाइड वेदर टू एलिवेट योर सेल्फ और टू डिग्रेड योर सेल्फ बिकॉज ओनली यू आर योर बेस्ट एनिमी एंड योर वर्स्ट बेस्ट फ्रेंड एंड योर वर्स्ट एनिमी सो द चॉइस इज फॉर यू टू मेक दैट इज दू थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग दैट थैंक यू फॉर दंडरफुल शेयर Shivang, there is a rather long comment uh, that you have put. I am not sure if I understand that correctly. If you can unmute yourself and speak, we can have a discussion on that. Hello, good evening to all. Good evening, Shivang. Ha, I was just sharing a simple incidents between my friends. There are three and four of us, and we were just arguing about something, and it kept on stretching over weeks. and so and so that somebody would call the other person and say yaar wo itna acha nahi kar raha aajkal na ajeeb ho gaya hai aisa itne saalon mein he had changed but once that situation ended over its own in next coming 3 4 weeks then everybody was back to normal stage so the piping hot halwa matlab we ah, feel okay, the okay. heat we feel the heat but it the situation resolves on its own every time okay okay yeah that's interesting thank you for sharing that shiva thank you uh, i hear your comment you know it's very tough to be happy uh, i would like you to replace tough with practice you know it requires practice okay. to be happy and yes, uh, definitely, one of definitely. the things is practicing gratitude and yes. once you are uh, thankful for everything that is there in life consciously uh, and look for the good that is there in the life okay then, okay uh, you know you start becoming happier and okay. um, i do a uh, daily journal okay uh, on gratitude and uh, you know there, there was a period of time when for about 15 days i couldn't do the journaling and i found myself uh, getting surrounded with negative thoughts and then okay. i started wondering why is this happening to me why i'm getting negative why this why that and then i realized for 15 days i have not been writing my gratitude journal and immediately i resumed my gratitude journal and uh, then you know in, in fact if you can see these journals on the right uh, they are all my uh, gratitude and affirmation journals so uh, then i resumed and you know then uh, my mood uh, my state of being improved over a period of time so the point is it takes practice anybody can be happy 
if we train our mind to be happy. True. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you, Shiva. So uh, anybody would like to share, you can use uh, raise hand button uh, in the reactions, and we can we'll be happy to hear from you uh, before we close the session for the day today. Yes, Prasanjit. I see uh, KP Jani Saab is there. Yes, yes. He is a man of wisdom. Ah, we'll be very happy to hear from you, Jani sir. KP Saab, Aap sun rahe hain? I think he is okay. not able to. No worries, no worries. So I'll request you once again to uh, share in the WhatsApp group what your takeaway from the session today is. This will help other people and motivate them to attend session live and benefit from what we share in these sessions. I'm sorry, uh, I was not able to manipulate and uh, get rid of my mute, unmute button. No I'm worries, on sir. old uh, sir, Namaskar. cell Namaskar. phone. Namaskar, everybody. And uh, it's been a pleasure listening. Uh, I am in need of a lot of uh, moral boost. Recently, I have been operated upon and uh, feeling a little jittery and everything. Tonight, I am traveling to US to go to my daughter for a little change so that uh, mentally I can be refreshed. But uh, such sessions are uh, food to the mind and to the spirit and to the soul. And uh, I'm really grateful to all of you for this wonderful session and thoughts. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ashish Bhai, uh, we have been associated since very, very long. I have yes. been in and out, uh, up and down. And as you said, that uh, the spectrum between very rich and very poor, that is very happy and very sad, physically, <laughs> have been going on. Yeah. Oh. But uh, that is how uh, God uh, teaches us yeah. how to uh, have faith in Him yeah. and how to have patience and develop yourself. We, thank you. Thank you for sharing that and we wish you speedy recovery, Jani sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Please share in the WhatsApp groups what's the story that resonated the most with you and what's your takeaway. And we look forward to meeting you next Sunday. The details will be shared in the group soon. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, whatever remains of it, and a great week ahead. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank